Hello there. We are talking about overcoming. We're in the middle of an overcomer series and uh, been enjoying this. I wrote a book years ago called Overcomer, The Emerging Church of the Third Day. And this book, um, I, tr I prophesied a lot of it into, uh, into uh, a recording tool and then wrote the book from that. And it, it's been quite revelatory. And so we're using a lot of this book. And you can get the book itself uh, from our website or from Amazon uh, in ebook if you'd prefer to have it in ebook. And also, we have a prophetic worship CD series. And we have uh, called the fourth one, You Will Overcome. And so um, I just feel like today is a day that we need to all bind together in strength, in one another's strength, come together, help one another to overcome these days. They're, they're, the, the hour that we live in is very challenging, um, very demanding, and um, our emotions, our mind, our will, all of our, all of our natural being is dealing with things that even a year ago maybe would seem impossible. And so we want to encourage one another to overcome. This is the fifth in the series, in the Overcomer series, number five. It's called Overcoming Sight Demands Light. <laughs> so, you know, if we're going to see with God's sight, we're going to actually be walking in great light. What happens when... You've been in the darkness and you walk out into brilliant sunshine. Well, your eyes have to adjust and you have to learn how to see in the, in the light. You know, Jesus says and God says that the, the light and the dark are the same to him. And so you and I, we have to learn to walk in his light, but also to walk in his sight. Um, in our previous lessons on the overcomer, we've used the analogy of the, of the great eagle and his amazing ability to con conquer, to ascend, to uh, catch the currents and, and to soar in the heights. Well, obviously, that's what we need to do in our world today, in this darkness. We need to see in the spirit. Spirit living demands that we see in the spirit. Seeing in the Spirit demands that we operate in great light. Now, if we're operating in the right structural framework, <laughs> my husband's an engineer, so every now and then I actually start talking about <laughs> structure and all this kind of stuff. But if we're operating in the correct structural framework, we're operating in the Spirit. So in that framework, we are children of sight. We are children of light. We must see as God sees. The, the scripture says, without vision, the people perish. Without that prophetic vision, without that vision of God, we perish. And so many times in our lives, in my life, I, I thought I saw. You know, 20 years ago, I was convinced certain things were true in the spirit. And, you know, I had certain ideas. And, and with a greater light and maturity in the Lord, I began to understand at a greater level, and I began to see that I wasn't really seeing that clearly. And so th that's why the scripture says we see as in a glass darkly. Oftentimes we see in a, as in a glass darkly, and that's why men's opinions uh, cause our 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 sight to be clouded, uh, rejection, fear, loneliness, persecution, past experience and hurt, everything like that colors our sight. And we have, as it were, dark glasses. These are things of darkness, rejection, fear, loneliness, all of those things. Those are things of darkness. And so uh, 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, The Lord said to Samuel, Don't look at his appearance or at the height of his stature, 
For God sees, not as man sees. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So we have to look at the heart. Now, we see many times in, 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 you know, when the children of Israel needed to know something, they would call for the prophet. <laughs> and when they would call for the prophet, the prophet would tell them what God was saying or what God was seeing or what God was doing or what God was going to do. <laughs> well, the Hebrew word for prophet means one who sees. That's why originally they called them seers. They called the prophets seers. So we must develop our spiritual eyes and spiritual senses to see as God sees. Now, when we look in the Bible, we can see, you know, Jacob saw the Lord face to face. He didn't realize what he was seeing, but he saw face to face. Gideon saw the angel of the Lord, um, the, the, the servant of Elisha that was all frightened because of the enemies. Suddenly he saw horses and chariots of fire, greater are those who are around us than those who are against us. The queen of Sheba, she wasn't a child of God, but she saw the wisdom of Solomon. These are not natural sights, you understand. David looked upon the Lord in his sanctuary and saw his power and glory. Well, David was a shepherd on the hillside when he saw many things. Isaiah saw the Lord, the king, high and lifted up. Look at all these people who saw into the spirit and thus into the future. The wise men saw a star. Well, I see a star every day. But they saw a star and they followed it. <clears throat> Interesting man, Zacharias, he saw a, a, a vision in the temple. And he knew something about what was a natural sight normally. The women saw the angels at the tomb. The multitudes saw the miracles of Jesus. Now that's an interesting whole point there. The, the multitudes that saw the miracles of Jesus, some of them saw the miracles and said, who is this I want to be with him? Others, like the Pharisees and the religious, they saw the miracles of Jesus and wanted to kill him. So we have to see with the eyes of the Lord the disciples First, they saw a natural man, but they saw what he did. And, and then they had to learn, the disciples had to learn how to see Jesus, the Spirit, Jesus, the King. And then they saw Jesus when he was risen. So we have to develop a second set of senses, a second set of eyes to see into that other realm even a second set of other senses. Um, I've been in, in services where the presence of the Lord was so strong and so powerful. I have smelled incense. I have smelled in a, a miracle worker in one of our conferences, metal was, was melting out of people's bodies. I could smell the metal melting out of the bodies. So there are, a, there, the spirit realm can begin to overtake and operate and we can see a new world. And that world is the world that God shows us through his eyes. Now, before I met my husband, I dated a scuba instructor. Now at that point, wild horses couldn't have made me get my face in the water. I didn't even like to swim with my face in the water. I was terrified by it. <laughs> but what wild horses couldn't do, a handsome scuba instructor certainly did. <laughs> he made me take his class and learn to do scuba diving. And because of that, I discovered a world I had never known existed. I mean, I'd seen pictures of fish and stuff like that, but it wasn't the same as diving into this new world. I mean, my, I was terrified when I jumped off that boat in the middle of the ocean, <laughs> but I was instantly captivated by the beauty of this stunning world of the ocean that, that man hardly ever sees now more than, than, than before. When, but now we have more, you know, you can see so many documentaries, but the, the infinite variety and meticulous artistic detail in God's creation is just... 
It's just an amazing, constant delight. I'm an artist, and, and I want to see. I want to see everything. That's the way I'm made. I want to see. And so the Bible says, look not at those things which are seen, but look at those things which are unseen. Now, that's a parable, and that's, that's almost like a paradox, but it was like me. I, had not, I was looking into the unseen when I jumped in the ocean, and suddenly I saw it. Well, that's what happens in the spirit. We, we look at what is unseen, but we, not, we don't look with our intellect and our natural understanding and our natural eyes, and then we begin to see with the spirit. We begin to see what is behind the natural, first the natural, and then the spirit. We develop second sight. Now, our analogy of the eagle, of the giant eagle, eagles have remarkably well-developed eyesight. They can see both side and long-distance vision. They can, they can survey a five-mile area with accuracy and instant clarity. Uh, the scope of their vision is 275 degrees, and they can see behind them, even in great measure. And it's interesting that their eyes are not fully developed at birth. It comes with maturity. So you and I, our eyes are not as developed to see in the spirit with the eyes of the spirit until we begin to mature in the spirit and we begin to be changed from glory to glory into his image. They actually, eagles even actually have two sets of eyelids. So they use one while they're stationary and, they, and then the other one drops over like an extra protection while they're flying from air and all that kind of stuff. But it's just kind of a loose analogy. We need that second ability to see, that second eyesight to see. And, and you know, I, I as an artist, I've, I've always been captivated by the beauty of the, 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 the branches in the winter against the sky, by the beauty of, of, the, of the great ocean with its... My, I, my place in heaven is going to be on a cliff in the mountains overlooking the ocean. <laughs> so I can have all of it. I want to see everything. And, and, I, and then as I, I, I got baptized in the Spirit and I began to walk in the Spirit, I wanted to see in the Spirit. I wanted to see angels. I, wanted, I fasted one time for three months. Big deal at that time. I'd just been baptized in the Spirit. I fasted chocolate and sugar for three months, or maybe it was even four months, because I wanted to see angels. And, and now we see angels quite often in our prayer uh, times, our prayer times of intercession in, in my life. I mean, I'm, I'm sometimes awakened by, <clears throat> by prophetic visions that the Lord then gives me prophetic words for. And so I, I was once t kind of explaining to myself, how does it make you feel? Because... When the Lord wakes me up in the night, I'm very sleepy. I have low blood pressure, so I'm very, I'm kind of, uh, I'll, I'll do it later, and I'll play that game with the Lord and my, with myself. Well, let me just sleep five more minutes, and then I'll write it down. And, you know, I go through all this thing. But then when I, when I begin to give way to it, and I begin to write it down, I begin to record it. Many of my books have been written like that. And I was, I, and then I go through periods where maybe I'm in a more dry season where this is not happening. And, and so I was asking myself one time, what is the difference? And I realized I feel alive. Even though I don't like waking up in the middle of the night and writing stuff down and doing, having dreams that I have to write because I won't remember them. If you get a dream from that is truly from the Lord, you need to write it down right away because a lot of times you won't remember it, the same thing with prophetic words. But we have to be obedient against the flesh and make the flesh fall into line, and then we truly are alive in the spirit. So <clears throat> my, my, my mind is a sharp mind. God gave me a good mind. I've, I've, I've done well in, always in school and in seven years of college, two degrees, two, two degrees in college. And, and so I, I have a good mind, and, and, and I see a lot of things with the eyes of my mind. But the Lord desires that we develop eyes of the Spirit because that's when there are going to be these dreams and these visions and these seasons in the night. 
It's like having night vision. <laughs> God's going to give us night vision. That's why he says the night and the day, the light and the dark are the same to me because he sees in the spirit and doesn't depend on natural light. It doesn't depend on that. So when we see with the eyes of the spirit, it literally confines the eyes confounds the eyes of the mind. Um, it's almost like our mind goes tilt. Many times the Lord will give me a word in the middle of the night and I'm, I'm speaking it by the Spirit and my mind is going, this is the craziest thing I've ever heard. I mean, literally. My Spirit will be dictating with my mouth the words of the Lord and my mind is thinking, this is, this is crazy. It doesn't mean anything. This is the ravings of a lunatic. I mean, seriously. And then when I go back to it the next day, I'm going, this is so profound. So the time has come that our eyes of the Spirit be our main vision. So we lay down the mind, we lay down the intellect, because God says, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And so <clears throat> the, the eyes of the carnal mind eventually get jaded, it, gets, it wears out, the membranes blur, the, the memory kind of begins to go with age, but the spirit is eternal. And so when we see with the eyes of the spirit, we see into eternity and we conquer time. We overcome the flesh and we conquer time because time is like an idol that man has made and erected with the eyes of his mind and, and he begins to bound everything by time and seconds and minutes and his will and his emotions run by the clock. But the Lord wants to put to death all that is not of the Spirit so that we put on the mind of Christ, the eternal mind of Christ, and then where we live, where we live is where he lives. We live in the Spirit. The Bible tells us all through the New Testament, walk by the Spirit. Walk not after the flesh, but walk by the Spirit. So in, in the Spirit realm, our life is abundant and fresh and evergreen and ever filled with light and sight and with that ability to fly as an overcomer. So the Lord is blowing a new wind in this season. He's raising up more per, per, of the prophetic they're being persecuted right now. The prophets are being persecuted, but they belong to God. And God says, do my prophets no harm. And he's raising up, even in this time of opposition, he's raising up more and more and more prophets so that they can speak with the eyes of the Spirit and cause others to see in the Spirit. Now, in my Overcomer book, this one that I told you about, I get, the Lord gave me in the middle of the night one night a whole essay on the mind of man. And really you need to just get the book and read that essay. But <clears throat> it starts out, I'm just going to read you parts of that from this book. Um, the mind of man, yes, my carnal mind is jaded and weary, always looking for something new, never satisfied, restless, irritable, and bored. <laughs> Who would ever think that? I would never have thought of that. But my mind has a personality of its own. It's a dominant personality. It's proud and, and, and disdainful. And if I know it, then I'm right and no one else is right. That comes out of the mind. And the mind, you know, <clears throat> it says it doesn't like to work, but the mind works all the time, works all the time, all the time. And so the mind becomes intrusive. It becomes an intruder into the things of the spirit. And the mind hates the things of the spirit because it knows that the spirit will rule one day. And so there's a war going on. Paul said that. I want to do the things that I don't do and I don't do the things that I want to do. That's his mind warring against the things of the spirit. And so <clears throat> the mind is impatient with the things of the spirit. It's impatient and frightened by change. The mind is like a child crying in the darkness. All of this is in this word, in this book on, on, the, on the, the mind of man. So, but, the, but when the mind of man begins to put on the mind of the spirit, the mind of God, the mind of Christ, then the mind of man finds a newness, a resurrection, a life, new patterns of thought. The scripture tells us take every thought captive 
to the obedience of Christ. So the mind finds new ways to learn and, 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 it, and the mind, the carnal mind, no longer rules. The mind of Christ, the eternal, immortal mind begins to rule and we begin to see and to understand with discernment and peace and, and we're, not, we're no longer, you know, many of us are tormented in our minds and, and there's, there's a frantic insecurity and, and um, uh, 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 just tormenting thoughts and stuff. But as we put on the mind of Christ, the mind of the Spirit, it does break the time barrier. It breaks the sound barrier. It breaks the barrier of all these tormenting things that want to cause us to, to really give over to darkness because the mind of the spirit is light and the mind that is carnal is dark. And so we begin to run free in the spirit and, and to, to jump and to run and to leap with joy, with the joy of the Lord that is our strength because his mind, his heart, his ways, his character, his nature is joy. It is light. It is peace. And all of this invades our mind. So we have to be willing to change. And so, oh mighty man, mind of man, you must be an overcomer. You must join with the spirit of the living God and fly into uncharted territory. You must rise out of the old places like the eagle, dust off your wings, and leave the places of darkness because lamps are being light, lit and the fires are being kindled for the greatest of all adventures, the journey into light. Psalm 18, 28, For you light my lamp, the Lord my God illumines my darkness. Psalm 104, 2, you cover yourself with light as a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a curtain. John 1, 4, in him was life and the life was the light of men. That life and that light become the mind of Christ the mind of the Spirit. John 8, 12, Jesus spoke to them and said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. That's what we put on, is to be able to see into the great light. There's, a, there's an overcomer taking on the spiritual man with God's light and therefore God's sight. So we press into the light. If we want to press, there's a scripture that says, I press on toward the mark of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. We press. So with our carnal mind, we need to press to take on the mind of Christ the mind of light, the mind that causes the sight, the clarity, the, the sure sight of the living God. We want to see clearly, just like the eagle sees clearly. The overcomer begins to see clearly. When depression comes, we don't see clearly. When fear comes, we're paralyzed. We don't see clearly. But we need the light of God and the sight of God, the ability to see in our mind, our will, and our emotions. When we get saved, our spirit is born again. But our mind, our will, our emotions, and our body have to learn this. And so we're learning. Ephesians 5, 8 says, you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. John 1, 7, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. See, the body of Christ right now is being exposed because that which is not seen is beginning to be revealed more and more and more and more. 
I used to sing an old song in, in uh, the church where I grew up. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. So you and I, we ask for light, and yet we continue to walk in darkness. This doesn't work. Eagles are creatures of the light. They're creatures who fly by day and, and hunt by day. They fly toward the sun and they live by the sun. You and I fly toward the sun. We need to fly toward him every day of our life, every day of our life, to be creatures who ask for light and sing about light and profess light and preach light and become the light. We are made of light, shafts of light, beams of light, bolts of light, just like that eagle is a lightning bolt. We become lightning bolts. We are overcomers coming out of darkness and with God's eyes seeing clearly in His great light. Every time we go into prayer, we learn how to see in the Spirit. Every time we read the Word, this Bible, I once saw a book written by a great prophet, and I was looking at it, and it was like I was holding liquid light. I just was a prophetic word of knowledge I had. And that's what this, this Bible is. It is a book of light. Read it. Immerse yourself in it. Immerse yourself in the words of God, which are life and light. This is a holy book. This is a book filled with the power of the Word of God. And that Word of God pierces into us like laser lights. Laser lights, laser lights, and changes us. So I encourage you today, be an overcomer. Come over the depression. Come over the fear. And allow the laser light of eternal light and life pierce in, pierce in, pierce in, and transform you so that you can see. You need to see in the Spirit. You need to see as God sees. You need to see as Jesus saw the Father and the Father sees Jesus. We need eternal light and eternal truth in this hour to overcome this present darkness. We're going to overcome. You will overcome. You will overcome. Listen to these words, these songs from the throne, and they proclaim, in this hour, you will overcome. Amen. Beautiful world, beautiful